let's talk about the system. Um, who are the role players? Who does what? And I've put up sort of five key ones here. And I think at the very top is the marketplace. So the JSC at its very core business is a trading platform. Um, we provide a marketplace for buyers and sellers to come together and sell instruments, whether that's equities or bonds or derivatives, whatever that is. That's really our core business. Um, that's a highly regulated environment. There's a there's an act that governs what we do. There's all sorts all sorts of investor protections, um, FSBs involved, that sort of thing. So it's quite a tightly regulated environment. Okay. So any stock that trades, if you want to sell or buy one Anglo share, you can only do it through the exchange. And even more so, you can't do it. You have to go to your broker, who's a registered member of the exchange, who's got a, a separate legal capital entity that they trade through, so that they can guarantee your trades. You have to go to him, and he will do the trade on your behalf. So there's this whole sort of trading environment of, of how you get to trading. And even when you're trading, if you're trading online, there's still a broker that's doing the work. Your trade has to go through a broker um, in order to get the exchange. All right. Um, at the end of that, then every day we get a price for every instrument. So for our 400 or 600 or 1,000 instruments, we get a closing price for every instrument. Then the index calculation agent comes along and says, all right, now that I've got all of these individual component prices, my basket if you like, I can now go and calculate the average price for the index. Okay, so that's what the index calculation agent does. Um, there's a lot, more, a lot more to it than that. I mean, there's, there's, we have to follow the rules and we do R&D and there, there's all sorts of things that you don't really know, need to know too much about. Um, but at the end of the day, the index calculation agent is an independent party who's responsible to publish that number every day. So when you see on, on the TV that the top 40 closed yesterday at, you've caught me now, 38,000, give or take, whatever it was, um, that number would come out of my team. All right. Then we have an index tracking fund. So this is normally an, um, an asset manager, an investment bank, that sort of thing, who would put together a fund, normally some kind of unit trust structure or ETF structure, and that would be a pooled fund where they would say, all right, what we're going to do is we are going to take money from lots of people, lots of investors. So we'll take your 100 Rand and your 300 Rand and your 10,000 Rand. We'll put them into a pool, and what we'll then do is we'll go and take that money and we'll invest it in the stock market. The question is, what do you buy? Now, in the traditional model, that company would be an asset manager, um, and they would go and pick which stocks that they think are going to do well based on whatever metric they're using. They may have a, a style approach, a vo volume or a value approach, or a, a growth approach, whatever that may be, and they would go and pick individual stocks, and they would take your pool of money and invest that fund in those stocks. Um, and, and Mike will speak a little bit about the historical performance of, of those kind of managers, which are called active fund managers, versus the passive manager, which is a, a, an index tracker. So what the passive manager does is says, okay, I'm not going to make any decisions. All right? All I'm going to do is I'm going to take your money, I'm going to take the index data that the JSC gives me, and I'm going to invest your money according to that rule. So let's say, for example, if you go back to our basket analogy, there's you know, one box of eggs, one milk, and one bread. We'll say, all right, we'll take all of your money, and we'll buy 3,000 eggs, 3,000 milks, and 3,000 breads, exactly in the same ratio that the index provider gives you the instruction for. So my job as index provider, I say this is the top 40 index. It's made up of these 40 companies today, and these are the weights of each individual company. The fund manager then says, all right, thank you, JC, for giving me the weights. Thank you, investor, for giving me the money. I'll invest your money in these weights, and you will then get that return. The benefit of that is you get instant diversification with a very, very small initial investment, because if you were to go and buy all 40 of the top 40 companies, you need a very big initial capital outlay to get that because all the stocks obviously cost a lot of money and you need a big pool of cash to get that. By pooling your cash, it's easy for the asset manager to get those in the right quantities. All right. Um, also, the index tracking fund um, is also quite tightly regulated. So what we see in an ETF environment or unit trust environment, that your money as an investor is completely protected, is ring-fenced. So the asset manager can't go and spend your money on you know, a trip overseas or a new yacht or whatever it may be. They are required by law to invest your money into those assets as defined by the index. And there is some quite tight regulation around that. So you do have a lot of protection as an investor that your money will be used for what the asset manager says it will be used for, which is very important um, because obviously you don't have full transparency in that process. All right. The next step is the investment platform. So now you can imagine we have lots of indices. Um, we, the JC publishes around about 160 indices every day. Um, but if you look at um, the total number of unit trusts or ETFs or that sort of thing, there are hundreds of different of these funds that are doing different things. So Mike will talk about the ETF world where there are a large number of ETFs that you can buy. 
And now you have exactly the same problem because I've just said, well, okay, which stock do you buy out of the 400? I said, don't worry about that, buy the index. But now I'm telling you there's 100 different index funds. So which one do you buy? So, you know, as, as that variety gets bigger, it means that you still need to do a little bit of research to find out which one to buy. But my point is you don't have to buy just one. So you may say, all right, I want some of my money in the top 40 because those are nice blue chips that's going to be fairly uh, low risk as compared to other equities. Um, so I want some of my money in the top 40, but I also want some money in mid caps or small caps and some in the income fund, et cetera, et cetera. And what you would then ordinarily have to do is go and give each asset money, asset manager a little bit of your money. And if you then wanted to move out of the top 40 into the mid cap, you'd have to give an instruction to this asset manager, sell that fund, get your cash back, give it to this guy, buy. And that's exactly where um, the investment platform comes in. So Mike Brown, our second speaker, is going to be speaking about his platform called ETF South Africa. And what they do is they give you a one-stop shop access to all ETFs. So basically, you have one account with um, the investment platform. You can then say, all right, I'll give you 300 in the month. This month, put your money into that ETF. Next month, put into that ETF. It's easier to swap between them. It just makes life a little bit easier. And then finally, I think most important <laughs> in this whole chain is you, the investor. Obviously, without your money, nobody has anything. Um, there is no business. And obviously, the whole structure is here to help you save and invest. Um, I think what, what's probably the most important thing as an investor is keep asking, keep learning, keep reading. At the end of the day, it's your money. It's not my money. At the end of the day, you're ultimately responsible. You don't want to give away accountability for your money. So make sure you understand where your money is going, into which products, what are the risks, what are the factors, what are the structures behind.